Blessed be, and welcome to the Circle of Heka. I'm Lady Amaris. Well, it's that time of year again, Sawin, the witch's new year, where witches get to let their hair down and also get to remember ancestors and those who have passed through the veil, maybe, maybe recently, but maybe, maybe not so much. But it's a time of, of celebration, but also reflection. Now, Sawin. It may be uh, when you look at it, um, if you're pronouncing it as per how it's written in English, Samhain, it's not, uh, it's not actually correct. It's actually Sa-win or So-win, which is uh, closer um, with my Australian accent to the, the Irish or the Gaelic um, pronunciation. It, uh, it marks the the harvest time. It is the time when the sun is now going to descend um, into the underworld. It is the dark half of the year. It is uh, a time when um, you would make sure that you had all of the the uh, the cold stores, all of the the meat, all of the the um, the food that you will need to to sustain you over those winter months. It is that um, that time between life and death. So it is it is seen to be where the veil between the worlds is at its thinnest. It's one of those um, one of those twilight times, uh, similar to the um, autumn and the spring equinox, where you have the the time is equal um, in uh, length. Uh, and equal in um, opposites, so that the so it's equal in in the energies. So the masculine, the feminine, the light, and the dark, the negative and the positive, both are one. Uh, so at Sawin, we have that veil between the worlds. It is when the sun is going to descend into the underworld. The god descends into the underworld. So it is where that uh, that. Uh, thinness becomes quite apparent so that you can slip between the worlds quite easily. So it means that as a witch or, or as anyone really, you can um, access uh, the, the spirit realm a little bit easier. You can um, talk to loved ones, talk to ancestors and uh, that veil, that, uh, that vibration is, is closer than it usually is. Uh, the only other time that it's similar to to um, Sarwin would be at Beltane, and obviously, if you're in the northern hemisphere, it's the time of Beltane right now. Um, but here in the southern hemisphere, we're celebrating Sarwin. So it is the Witch's New Year. Um, it is also um, called All Hallows Eve. Um, it is time when we celebrate and remember our ancestors and our loved ones. It is a time of reverence and, and remembrance, but it's also a celebration because um, within wherever there is death, there is always life, and wherever there is life, there is always death. It is that cycle, and so we remember. Um, and celebrate the lives of our loved ones. Even though it may be a sad occasion, we celebrate their life and how they lived. Uh, loved ones don't want to hear us crying and, and, and mourning over them uh, so much as to celebrate their life and what they did and how their lives affected you and, and the people around them. Um, so it is a time of beginnings and a time of endings. Uh, it's that fragile phase between between the worlds where one time is dying and another time is, is coming into fruitation. It is also the time of the crone aspect or the wise woman or the dark goddess. And um, most of the time the dark goddess or the crone is, is demonized a lot of the time. You find that um, witches... If you want to see them as being, um, say, evil, will always be the, the ugly old witch or the, the witch that has some kind of disfigurement which makes them maybe old and ugly or 
um, which is kind of um, an outward showing of what they would like to say is that if you're if you're a bad witch or if you're a witch in general, then then you're going to be ugly and old and and um, and in a way also demonizing um, getting old and having the the um, the power that a woman has when she gets older is being demonized because it's always the the cult of the youth it's the youth that is the the uh, the virgin uh, the the good one the 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 one where as soon as they walk through um, through the the forest the the sunlight shines on them and the and the birds sing but it's the crone aspect the wise old crone that is demonized and seen as dark and evil because it is uh it is the cult of the youth um a woman who has been around the block as they say a couple of times knows the deal they're not as naive as as the young as the youth and so the older woman the uh the dark aspect of the crone is something to be feared because a woman who has um who knows things because she's experienced things is a is a force to be reckoned with so it is that dark time when we're going down into the underworld it is that time of retrospect it is that time of um going into the underworld and and fighting your demons um you have the the idea of um Horus who goes um on the um the boat and goes down into the underworld uh and and then as he he rises up through the new day so we have that that um idea of going into the underworld and and fighting the demons and and doing the shadow work so this is a awesome time for you to start doing some shadow work doing some introspection starting to to pick away that the layers of yourself and and um, start to face your demons uh, because we're in that that dark aspect of the of the year unless you're in the northern hemisphere and then um, it's it's party party until till uh, summer solstice um so this time of the year we have the as i said the dark goddesses we have the the hecates we have the hell we have the morrigan we have lilith and carly um we have um Inanna, uh, we have Banshees, we have Persephone who goes into the underworld at this time, we have um, Baba Yaga, all of those strong uh, dark uh, forces that are uh, about finding out about yourself and, and um, looking into your own darkness, not necessarily evil, uh, darkness is not um, evil it is an, an easy way to say or oh, this is good and this is bad but it is not um, it is not inherently evil um, to have these dark powerful goddesses we also have the the um, the gods of this time so it's horn and Cernanos and Kanana and Anubis um, and Odin our colors would be blacks and oranges and you can see that that's uh, um, experienced in in pumpkins we have the orange color and that's also at the time of the leaves starting to to uh, um, wither and 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 die and those colors of the the golds and the oranges and the browns um, you will see um, a lot of the time um, I know Perth has a little bit more of a uh, a season in some some areas not all areas we do have um, our different seasons which I will talk about uh, in another in another video the the um, Aboriginal seasons um, and how they are marked but um, from now we do have we do have um, quite a few trees that will um, lose their leaves and so those leaves start to to, to brown off and, and go golden orange and brown um, the symbols obviously are pumpkins, gourds, apples, cauldrons, bale fires, uh, jack-o'-lanterns and, and 
and um, scarecrows and ghosts and bats and, and dark black cats. We also have um, um, the animals which would, as I said, black cats and bats and owls. We have pumpkins, um, pomegranates are also another another um, fruit for this time of the year and that is in line with Persephone as Persephone goes into the underworld and she eats the pomegranate and um, the amount of seeds that she eats denotes how many months of the year she must spend in the underworld and how many months of the year that she spends um, in, in the light giving us our seasons. Uh, we have um, the food that you would um, have for this time of year would be gingerbreads and nut breads and pumpkins and popcorn, all the types of foods that you would consider to be harvest foods. Um, so corn and pumpkins and, and apples. Um, apples are a, a, a staple food over the, the winter months because they are very easy to, to keep. And uh, obviously they're, they're good for you and help you to, uh, to not have scurvy. Um, we have mead and apple cider and mulled wine uh, are, are good things to start to have as it starts to get a little chilly. Um, it's always nice to, to have a nice mulled wine as you're sitting watching the crackling fire. So the Sawin, the time between times where you can meet and talk to your ancestors, your loved ones, those who are crossed over. Now we had our Sawin festival the other day and it was a wonderful affair. I'd like to thank all of the, the covens that, that came and uh, participated in the the, uh, the festival. It was a, it was fantastic to see you all, and uh, and I hope you all enjoyed it. We had uh, many people uh, dressing up, and it was a it's a great little affair. I dressed up, and uh, I hope I didn't scare too many people. I dressed as the dark goddess. A bit of an amalgamation of Kali, uh, the Morrigan, um, many, many dark, dark goddesses um, went into, into my costume and into my, into my uh, um, persona for that night. Um, and uh, we'll have a couple of pictures for you at the end of this video. Hope you enjoy those. There's a couple of ladies that said it was okay to have their their picture on the internet, um, so uh, that will be good. And um, yeah, so Sawin, the time between the worlds, the witch's new year, the time of endings, and the time of new beginnings. So happy new year, everybody, and I hope that. This witch's new year will see all your dreams come true. Merry meet, merry part, and merry meet again. Blessed be. Enjoy the uh, the images. I'm Sawin. <laughs>